a very warm welcome to uh, this uh, evening's or uh, this time's presentation. And uh, uh, I pray and uh, hope that uh, you are doing well wherever you are. And uh, we are going through the series, the prophets and the messengers. And uh, if uh, you haven't uh, been able to go through all uh, the materials we have been putting outside there, then uh, you are free to go to our YouTube channel and look for the playlist, the prophets and the messengers, some things to ponder about. And uh, this is all about um, the Old Testament prophet and messengers and the New Testament prophets and the messengers and what they had to encounter in their lives and how they had to deal with it. And um, we reached at a time we were talking about the message of the Lord, E.G. White. And so today, uh, or in this presentation, I'm going to cover uh, the response of Wagona, E.J. Wagona, and uh, G.I. Uh, Butler. This is the, resp uh, the, the response of uh, E.J. Wagoner and G.I. Butler to the Living Temple. In the previous presentation, I labored to show uh, what did really Kellogg believe, uh, a case study of what Kellogg meant and not what people think that he meant. And so we went through some material and his ex exchange with um, uh, A.G. Daniels and to today and in this presentation, I just want to look at E.J. Wagoner response to the Living Temple and uh, G.I. Butler response to the Living Temple. Uh, before that, I'd like just to give thanks to the Lord and then we enter into the presentation. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much that uh, through these feeble instruments, the messages can be aired in the four corners of the world and so May they work for the glory and honor of your name in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I have nothing against uh, the people and the pioneers, but I just want us to bring out our history so that uh, we may not repeat the same history that they traveled through and in a negative way. But uh, if we have to repeat the history, then let it be a good history and not a bad history. Uh, there is something that we saw yesterday or in the previous presentation, and uh, I just want to highlight it as we begin this. And uh, this was coming from uh, uh, how the spirit of prophecy met a crisis by W.A. Spicer. He said, the people who are on the committee of the Living Temple say that we find in the book Living Temple nothing which appears to us to be contrary to the Bible or the fundamental principles of the Christian religion, and that we see no reason why it may not be recommended by the committee for circulation in the manner suggested. And then E.G. White had to say that if the people who had been in the truth for so long could not discern these things, how about the people who are newbies and novices to uh, such a things? And it was her lamentation that uh, it was being asserted that her writings, uh, the, the living temple, uh, could be sustained by uh, her writings, which she said that uh, God forbid that such a, such a statements can be added. Uh, uttered. And so uh, we find that the people who are on the committee will not find anything that was objectionable for this book to be printed. And we want to see how E.J. E. Wagoner responded to the, to the Living Temple and then see how G.I. Butler uh, responded to the Living Temple. And um, I, I'd like just to share a very interesting letter, very, very interesting letter. Uh, about why the living temple was um, why the living temple appeared in science and time. 
we're going to give an interesting picture actually why the living temple appeared in uh, the science of the time and uh, i think he wanted to clear his name from this thing now this letter that i'm going to share with us you will have to bear with me if uh, i don't get some words correctly because it is a scanned letter but i'll try to read out things the way they are why the living temple appeared in signs of the time by wagona ej now this is wagona writing to uh brother prescott and he he, he goes ahead and say dear brother prescott the abundance of news that has come all at once has almost overwhelmed me and i scarcely know where to begin to reply taking the last first i'll say that we were shocked and almost stunned by the news received the night before last that the main building of the review and herald had um, already been in ashes 13 days i can well understand that you are all too much overcome by the calamity and so pressed with planning and arranging for the carrying on of the work that you could uh, have uh, no time, you could leave no time or thought to taking any announcement of it. Of course, you can understand that there is much solicitude to learn all about the particulars of the fire and the prospects for the future. We do not profess to know what these things mean nor what will be the end of them, and I suppose you do not either, but we shall wait with interest to see what the effect of this latest fire will be on the future of the work in Battle Creek. I cannot help being impressed that there is some indication that God will not have any more building piled up at least in Battle Creek, and more than this, it seems to me that the fewer buildings we have anywhere, the better off we shall be. I have long felt that money invested in men and literature is far more wisely expended than when tied up in brick and mortar. So far as our schoolwork is concerned, we feel more than ever like renting uh, quarters for another year, getting something, of course, much more suitable and uh, convenient that uh, than the makeshift that we have at present. Now, Wagona says that he do not know where this, what is the cause of these fires, what is happening, and what shall be. But then, uh, I think we had something interesting with E.G. White that she said uh, that. Um, uh, She says something, and I, I like to try bring it on the screen. But if I don't find it, I'll move on. But I, I can paraphrase what it says that uh, E.G. White says that I have been afraid to open up the review, seeing that God has cleansed the publishing house. Those, those were her words. And then we're going to... To, uh, and uh, I'm not uh, trying to put a motive on Wagona's statement, but Wagona to say that now uh, he doesn't know uh, where these fires uh, mean and what is the issue and where where we are headed. It is actually maybe he hadn't read what E.G. White had said or uh, uh he didn't just want to spell it out as uh, it should. And uh, this is the statement that E.G. White had to make in uh, the publishing ministry page uh, uh, 164, paragraph 6, and also in uh, Testimonies to the Church, volume 8, page uh, 91. And uh, I'll read it. Wagona says that he doesn't understand what is happening, but E.G. White has something to say about these things. 
You have given matter containing certain sentiments into the hands of the workers, bringing his deceptive polluting principles before their minds. The Lord looks upon this action on your part as helping Satan to prepare his snare to catch souls. God will not hold guiltless those who have done this thing. He has a controversy with the managers of the publishing house. I have been almost afraid to open the review, fearing to see that God has cleansed the publishing house by fire. Yet you will have Wagona saying that I do not know what is happening. We do not know it and we don't know the future of it. But let me just stop there. I don't want to put uh, some motives on his words and continue his response to the living temple and what is happening with the Battle Creek team and uh, Kelo. So he continues telling uh, Prescott, but the news of the fire did not shock me nearly as much as the news that uh, came in the letters from you and Brother Spicer. You understand Spicer had talked about Kellogg and the, the Hinduism that he had in the book Living Temple and accused those who are working with uh, Kellogg to be pantheistic in their ideas. So Wagona, who was close to Kellogg, and Etijones, who are close to Kellogg, remember Etijones says, I do not find anything objectionable in the book The Living Temple. And uh, Wagona says that he is shocked with what Spicer is talking about him and the people connected with Kellogg on this issue of the book, The Living Temple. So he says, but the news of the fire did not shock me nearly as much as the news that came in the letters from you and Brother Spicer. You are mistaken in supposing that I knew anything of what had been going on. Brother Corliss landed at Liverpool and he has not been to London and I have not had a word of communication with him. I did not know that Miss Sisley had any knowledge of anything, and moreover, I have but barely spoken to her. So all that I knew was that I gathered from the minutes of the council that were sent me. And he is defending his position why actually the living table had to, living table had to appear in the signs of the time when actually Sister White had condemned it and it had spiritualistic ideas. I should also tell you in this connection that I have never had a copy of the Dr. Kellogg's book in my hands until since I received your letter when I borrowed Dr. Olsen's page proofs. So you will know that what has appeared in present truth from Dr. Kellogg has not been taken from his book, but from uh, good health in the regular course of selection. We were governed in selecting it just the same as in all your selections by our feeling that uh, the things selected express uh, expresses in general terms at least what we should wish to say. Of course, selected matter cannot be expected to contain just what the editors would write in just the same shape. And it is not desirable that it should, else there will be no variety it may be better. So he's talking about uh, the material of Kellogg appearing in the science of the time to uh, actually have the variety in the articles and so on. Perhaps I ought to say, in order that there may be no ground for misapprehension and that you may know how utterly innocent I have been of any knowledge of any controversy that has uh, been um, raging in Battle Creek, that the article which will appear in the February Good Health English from me was written without the slightest thought that there were, was any disagreement on these points. I undertook the series in response to Mahilon's and the doctor's earnest request and in accordance with a promise I made some months ago. The first one was to have appeared in the January, the first one was to have appeared in the January number but I could not get it ready. It was written, however, and in print before I received any intimation of what was taking place or had taken place in Battle Creek. So you will know that it is not at all in the line of controversy. So whatever is appearing in the, in, in the science of the time, E.J. Wagona is saying that it has nothing to do with the living temple. And he will enter into this matter as he continues to respond to Prescott on this matter. Uh, 
so uh, uh, he says that uh, perhaps I ought to say in order that there may there may be no ground for misapprehension and that may and that you may know how utterly innocent I have been of any knowledge of any controversy that has been uh, raging in Battle Creek, that uh, the article which will appear in the, in the February Good Health in English from me was written without the slightest thought that there was any disagreement. Now, he goes ahead to tell um, uh, Prescott, but I confess that I am perplexed beyond measure by what I read in, in uh, you are a new and brother Spicer's letters. I cannot take it all in. I cannot conceive that Dr. Kellogg has made a final and deliberate break on these grounds. I cannot help thinking even yet, and I do not want to think otherwise, that he has been driven by pressure and under great excitement into extravagant and strong statements that he will not make under other circumstances, but time will tell. Now, um, again, just uh, continued on in this letter. Going to Uh, the last paragraph of uh, page uh, one of this letter. I appreciate the warning that you and Brother Spicer have given and the feeling of the brethren that great care should be taken in the presentation of the truth. But I cannot see how I can do anything else than continue just as I have been doing. I have always studied as much as possible to state the truth in exact terms. And I believe that such a statements are the very at the very best guard against and corrective of error. I do not think we ought to be any less explicit and emphatic because some may be perverting the truth. That will be compromise. It is just for the purpose of uh, frightening people away from soul-saving truth that the devil has counterfeited uh, it and he has been too successful. So it has never been my custom to pay the slightest attention to the million forms or expression of error, but only to study what, um, but only to study what is set forth in the word. As long as I make no assertion of my own, but simply present what is in the Bible, I feel perfectly safe. And so if uh, you look at uh, what Wagona again is saying, even though there are some things that Kellogg is saying which are untrue, but actually they have been blown out of pro uh, proportion by um, the slightest error that are in the book Living Temple. And those are not my words. Uh, I'll be able to read this. He thinks that they have not dealt with Kellogg judiciously with uh, his book, The Living Temple, because he thinks that uh, uh, some small errors has made the brothers magnify the thing beyond proportion. Now, how Wagona could say that when E.G. White was saying that this was pantheism and um, uh, things that um, were going to be, the things that were alpha to omega of apostasy, you would wonder why he was saying like this. Now, he says, surely when we have the plain declarations of the Bible and hold to them, we cannot be wrong. Now, in my teaching, I have been utterly oblivious of Dr. Kellogg. I began in the presentation of the message, Behold Your God, before Dr. Kellogg had written anything in that line and have not been influenced in the least by what he or anybody else has said. I know for myself whom I have believed and what I have believed and why I have believed. I expect to be careful, but I cannot see how I can hinder anybody from making whatever use he will of my words. Of one thing I am sure, and that is that nobody can swing me into pantheism. So what is the issue here? Spicer and uh, uh, Prescott are saying that uh, there is a way that uh, Kellogg 
has influenced Wagona and the people he is working with. Sister White had that idea too that uh, the medical fraternity was being influenced by a certain person um, uh, who was over them and removing the timber of the foundation or the pillars of our faith. And so Spicer and Prescott were just saying what actually uh, Sister White had been saying, but Wagona is saying that I have not been influenced by um, Kellogg in any way to be a pantheistic. And so he continues to say, uh, of one thing I am sure, and that is that nobody can swing me into pantheism or into endorsement of it by my words, even though it should be said as it has been said that um, uh, I am a, panth a pantheist. So they were saying Wagner was a pantheist also. That will not make it so. Many people who take up the word do not know what it means, nor in what it consists. You know that there is a wonderful power in names to influence people. Let people once get the idea that there is um, a, a, pro, a problem connected with a name, and there is nothing they will dread so much as the name. Though they may cherish the thing itself. Now, I maintain that uh, the truth concerning God as I see the thing itself. Now, I maintain that the truth concerning God as I see it in the Bible and nature, and as I have to a limited degree set it forth, is the surest safeguard possible against pantheism. You know how vigorously uh, Brother Hutchinson has compared my teaching and yours also. And if you will recall his statements in opposition, you will remember that they were essentially pantheistic. When he insisted that the power seen in creation was creature power, but not saving power, he really attributed divinity to the creature instead of to the creator and redeemer. And uh, G.I. Butler will be dealing with this power in nature and power in a person in his uh, response to the living temple. From the report of the council, I gather that uh, the center of the whole controversy is whether or not the human body without respect of persons is the temple of God. I take it that the question was over this vital point and not as to whether or not there was some unguarded statements in Dr. Kellogg's book. The difference is fundamental. Thus, I read on page 128. Professor Prescott stated that his criticism of the book was based upon his belief that man in his natural sinful state is not the temple of God. So Prescott is saying man in his sinful state is not the temple of God. In the sense of scripture teaching, in turning from righteousness, man ceases to be the temple of God and is restored only by a new creation in Christ Jesus. This distinction seemed to him essential. In view of a specific work at this time in warning against the great perversion of the gospel, which has come through the attempt to establish God's presence in the place where, in reality, the man of sin is manifested. In this, in the last expression, I see reference to the teaching in the Sabbath school lesson with which I am in perfect accord concerning the two mysteries and the restoration of the real presence, that is the presence of God in the man. But I am surprised that this very paragraph did not convince all who accept the statement as to what our specific work is that the body, uh, the body of sinful man is indeed the temple of God. For we read that the man of sin seated in the temple of God. What stronger proof could there be that our our bodies, even when we turn from righteousness, are the rightful temple of God. His dominion has been usurped. Is not this what uh, gives point to sister White's oft repeated exhortations to cleanse the soul temple from all defilement and to the statement that God and his word are kept in the outer court. Solomon's temple was the temple of the Lord, even when used as a stable or a stable for the horses dedicated to the son, and it was because the temple was still the house of God, although turned into a den of themes, that Jesus drove out the money changers. Now, hold on a minute. The arguments of Wagner are this. 
First of all, Prescott says, when man ceases to do righteousness, when he indulges in sin, he ceases to be the temple of God. Wagona comes and says that in our Sabbath school, we wrote that, um, or it was written that um, the man of sin seated in the temple of God. And because the body of a human being is the temple of God, then uh, the body is still the temple of God, even though the man of sin seated there. But then um, you look at the thin line of truth and error. But um, this can be solved uh, in some way. Uh, look at this statement by Sister White. Uh, she says, and... Uh, in, uh, in uh, Someone in Talks, Volume 1, page 343, paragraph 1, she says, Thus I worked and suffered in my girlhood, and through my life I had had the same errors to meet, though not always in the same form. In living temple, the assertion is made that God is in the flower, in the leaf, in the sinner. But God does not live in the sinner. The word declares that he abides only in the hearts of those who love him and do righteousness. God does not abide in the heart of the sinner. It is the enemy who abides there. So this exchange between Prescott and Wagona that man, even in his sinful state, is still the temple of God. Um, Prescott saying it can never be and uh, Wagona saying it is. And Sister White says that God does not dwell in the heart of a sin. So which side is she leaning on? On the side of Wagona or on the side of Prescott? As for my reading, I see that she's leaning on the side of uh, Prescott, that God does not live in the sinner. And hence, uh, man as a sinner is not the temple of God because God does not live in a sinful body. But Wagona is maintaining that God uh, the temple, the, the, the body of man, even though a sinner, is still the temple of God. And he will go ahead and talk about how the living temple is not as bad as people think that it is. But uh, we continue on until you reach that point. Now, and Wagona, strangely, Wagona says, this is what Sister White says, that uh, the sinner the body of a sinner is still the temple of God. But uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't give a quote to justify that, that uh, Sister White says that uh, uh, the, the, the body of a sinner is uh, the temple of God. In fact, Sister White says that uh, the sentiments that the teachings of the living temple can be upheld my teachings is something wrong. God forbid that it can be said that uh, my writings can sustain the teachings in the living temple. He says that it was because of this that I had to raise my voice, meet it. And so uh, let us see how Wagona continues to respond to Prescott. Now, he says, I do not know what Dr. Kellogg may or may not believe in his heart concerning the atonement, etc. You remember the statement of E.G. White, I saw the atonement was the sanctuary was gone and the atonement was gone. So Wagner is saying, I don't know what actually Dr. Kellogg believes in. But when Sister White read the living temple, she said that I saw that the sanctuary was gone, the atonement was gone, and we had nothing to lean upon. And so, but in his in this wonderful truth, the greatness of which has, I believe, but just begun to dawn upon us, I find the strongest basis for righteousness. I do not know of any other ground on which so strong appeals can be made. I see it everywhere in the Bible, but to cite only one passage, Deuteronomy 30, 11 to 14, compared with John 1, 1 and Romans 10, 6 to 10, shows conclusively that God, the word Christ, dwells in every man. You see what Wagner is now saying, that Christ dwells in every man. E.G. White says, no, God does not dwell in a sinner. It's the enemy that dwells there. Prescott says, God does not live in a man who is sinful. And so it is like Wagner is lining up with Kellogg, but he's saying, I have never read the works of Kellogg, 
but I only state what is the truth. And if uh, there is a name associated with error, then we don't have to say other truths that people are saying because somebody who is in error has spoken them, they are also error. Something so interesting. Again, um, he says, God dwells in every man in order that he may be righteous. Only because he's there is there any hope of salvation. And the condemnation is that he is there unrecognized or unacknowledged and held down. See Romans 1, 1 uh, chapter 1, verse 18. It was, it was to rebellious Israel that Moses was speaking. They were not to make ex excuses, the heathen or without excuse, asking who will bring the word. The commandment to them that they might do it because the word is nigh thee in the mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. Now, actually, the, the statements of Wagona can be confusing until you bring all the scriptures together and uh, see how you can reconcile everything. We are told Christ is at the door of uh, Laodicean knocking that he may come in. Now, Wagona says that he is already there. But if he is there, why is he still knocking so that you may open and come in? It doesn't make sense unless I don't understand what he's saying. But we are told in Revelation chapter 3 that God, our Christ is at the door knocking. If anyone lets him in, he'll come and sup with him. In John chapter 14, he says, whoever shall do my word and shall keep my commandments, I and my father will come in and dwell with him. Which means whoever is not doing my word and my commandment, there is no way I can come in and dwell with him. Uh, I think uh, that is something that Wagona did not bring up. I did not see in this article. So this is the righteousness which is of faith, the same message which we have been presenting this 18 or 20 years. And what kind of righteousness is Wagona talking about? That God is in everyone. Only I can see much more in it now than I can I could at the first. I do not see any reason to be frightened away from the fullness of it. I am persuaded that it must be grasped in its fullness that we must know even to, uh, to a greater extent than we now appreciate it, that our bodies belong to the Lord. Only the complete practical recognition of this truth will make us, will take us through the plagues. I know, although I have not read any books on theosophy, that is the presence of God, or Christian science, uh, that many Bible, and uh, talking about um, uh, what we call um, theosophy, that is um, actually teaching about God and the world based on mystical insight. And uh, uh, this is actually uh, the Brahm, uh, Brahmanic theories, especially of pantheistic evolution and reincarnation. This is theosophical, uh, uh, the teaching about God and the world based on mystical insight. And so he says, I know, I know, although I have not read any books on theosophy or Christian science, that many Bible phrases are used by those who hold those doctrines. I have read spiritual spiritualist spiritualist claims to be the true adventist i know that spiritualists regularly sing nearer my go to thee but are we to be frightened off from this truth because they pervert them and claim endorsements of their errors surely we ought the more vigorously to maintain them and uh, and and show how utterly opposed they are to falsehood. The fact that a heathen poet had said that we are the offspring of God did not prevent Paul from maintaining that God is our, our father, even the father of uh, the heathen. And so it is interesting how Wagner is uh, defending what he's saying that, uh, and uh, it is true that if a person who is in apostasy speaks the right thing 
we don't have to shun from that right thing because now it is being espoused by a heathen. Just like people normally say, if uh, the Pope today says that the Sabbath is the seventh day, we should not now start running away from that truth because the one who has said is claimed to be the man of sin and working for the system that is against God. So he's, uh, what essentially we're going to say, because Kellogg utters some statements that are false, we should not shun from those statements that he utters that are truth. And one of those truths is that God is even in a sinner. So we're going to maintain that uh, the sinner's body is the temple of God. Prescott says no. E.G. White says no. But he says that the sooner we start believing these things and uh, appreciate them more, uh, the fuller we'll uh, get to uh, uh, know these things when we acknowledge them. Very interesting. And I can provide the letter so that you can go through it slowly and uh, be able to grasp everything. Um, I write this because it really seems to me that there is an unconscious letting go of some vital truth um, and involuntary shrinking, shrinking back from it because error lies alongside. So in the living temple, we have the truth and error and they lie alongside. And what I'm saying, he sees the danger that we are entering in, that we are unconsciously letting go some of vital truth because we are seeing that in the living temple, these two lies close and then we throw out the baby with the bath towel. And so, but while we ought always to be careful to state the truth in the language of the Bible, we must not yield a single point that error claims and need not to be afraid of the fullest and most explicit statements of it. There is a difference as great as the distance between heaven and earth and the east and the west between the truth that God is in everything and the lie that everything is God. Listen carefully to what Wagner says. There is a difference as great as the most explicit. There is a difference as great as the distance between heaven and earth and the east and the west between the truth that God is in everything. The truth is, we're going to say God is in everything. And the error is, we're going to say that everything is God. And so he says there's a clear distinction between that. The one is truth and the one is error. And they lie so close. And by rejecting the other error that everything is God, we should not reject that God is in everything. Very, very interesting to say God is in everything. Sister Wise says, God is not in everything. Prescott says, God is not in everything. But Wagona maintains, God is in everything. Indeed, there is no alternative between the truth that God is in everything and pantheism. The truth that God is above all and through all and in all is the sure safeguard against the error that everything is God. Now, I know that you will appreciate the fact that it is impossible for me to put myself in the place of those who have been talking lately with Dr. Kellogg. But I am bound to say that having read a good portion of his book, now he says, I have read it. In the beginning of the letter, he had not read it until he was given some pages of it, some proof pages of it. Now he tells some uh, uh, Prescott that I have read the book since I received your letter. I cannot detect anything radically wrong in it. Hold on a minute. Now I know that you will appreciate the fact that it is impossible for me to put myself in the place of those who have been talking lately with Dr. Kellogg. But I am bound to say that having read a good portion of his book since I received your letter, I cannot detect anything radically wrong in it. Wagona cannot detect anything radically wrong in that book. I'll revisit the point that um, Jonas had to say. Just looking at what Jonas had to say. And uh, this is the statement that uh, Jonas actually had. Bear with me for a minute. I'll just put it there. 
Jonas says that we find in the book Living Temple nothing which appears to be to us, which appears to us to be contrary to the Bible or the fundamental principles of the Christian religion, and that we see no reason why it may not be recommended by the Committee for Circulation in the manner suggested. Now, Wagona says that, but I'm bound to say that having read a good portion of this book, since I received your letter, I cannot detect anything radically wrong in it. Sister White said, where were the watchmen? They knew nothing. It was of the startling nature. And people did not know it. And everyone was saying amen to it. Now we have the testimony of Jonas. There's nothing wrong with the book. We have the testimony of Wagona. There's nothing in the book and God is in everything. But everything is not God. Something that Sister White is saying that these things are alpha of uh, deadly heresies. And they sweep away the whole economy of uh, the gospel. But here is the message of righteousness by faith. A.T. Jonas and E.J. Wagona saying that they find nothing radically wrong with the book. Now, what will he go ahead to say? I can see nothing that cannot be remedied by judicious editing. Wagona says that I can see nothing that cannot be remedied by judicious editing. What does E.G. White say all about this? Let us hear what she has to say. Let us hear what uh, she has to say herself. Uh, Uh, I'll pull this on the screen once again. And uh, this is uh, 11MR314.2. Just want us to see something interesting. What did we're going to say? That if judicious editings could be done, this book is acceptable. But listen to what Ejiwat says. If ever there was a time when the writings of every author needed to be criticized, it is now. Talking about the living temple. God's word is to be our study book. In this word, we do not find such a representations of God as presented in the living temple. Had Christ thought it essential for such a theories to be given to human beings, he would have included them in his teachings. To me, it seems passing strange that some who have been long in the work of God cannot discern the character of the teaching of the living temple in regard to God. You, 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 saw, you, you just heard Wagner and you can read it say that he find nothing radical, difficult in that book. All through the book are passages of scripture. These scriptures are brought in such a way that error is made to appear as truth. Erroneous theories are presented in so pleasing a way that unless care is taken, many will be misled. So, she says, to me, it seems passing strange that some who have been long in the work of God cannot discern the character of the teaching in the living temple in regard to God. In the next paragraph, she says, I am called upon by God to stand in defense of the truth that has been given us as we have followed the leading of him who is the way, the truth, and the life. The living temple, not inspired by God. The book living temple is not to be patched up. A few changes made in it and then advertised and praised as valuable production. It will be better to present the physiological parts in another book under another title. When you wrote that book, you were not under the inspiration of God. There was by your side the one who inspired Adam to look at God in a false light. Your whole heart needs to be changed thoroughly and entirely cleansed. And so uh, she said the book, Living Temple, is not to be patched up. But look at this, what we're going to say is that... Um, uh, He says that I can see nothing that cannot be remedied by judicious editing. Sister Wise says that the book cannot be patched and advertised. 
It is really far less extravagant in its expression than I had expected, and some of a statement might be omitted or modified without cause. But this is not surprising, considering his past experience. On the whole, I cannot see any reason why the book with such a um, uh, emendations as um, emendations as uh, as I feel sure Dr. Kellogg will accept should not be published. Now, this is what I'm gonna say. On the whole, I cannot see any reason why the book with such a uh, amendations as I feel sure Dr. Kellogg will accept should not be published. Now, back to the statement of uh, A.T. Jones that we find in the book, Living Temple, nothing which appears to us to be contrary to the Bible or the fundamental principles of Christian religion, and that we see no reason why it may not be recommended by the Committee for Circulation in the manner suggested. Here, Wagner is saying, that if it is modified and recommendations made to Dr. Kellogg who will accept it and change them, it can be published. Sister White says that it cannot be patched. Really, Wagona says, really, if I had been present, I cannot see from the book itself, but that I should have been compelled to stand with A.T., that is Jonas, of course, I, I read it with no knowledge of what Dr. Kellogg may have said in private, but so will the public. I think that the book is better calculated to do good than many other books that we have published. Now, very strange from Wagona that he sees The Living Temple, a book that will do good more than harm do good than any other books that we publish. And he says that he will stand with A.T. Jones. And I'll leave the audience to really try to digest that for a moment. And what is uh, Wagner saying? I'm not a pantheistic, as uh, people may think. And I speak the truth from the Bible. And even though someone who is a pantheistic may have said it, and to people, they took it as an error. Still, it is the Bible truth. I cannot say how sorry I am to think that this open rapture has come, and I know you are too. I cannot help thinking that you will yet be healed. I honestly pray that uh, uh, it may. But I have written a long letter, and the time for my Bible classes is approaching. I wish that I might have a good talk with you for later uh, writing is so tedious and so unsatisfactory a means of communicating. So little can be expressed. But I have written a long letter and the time for my Bible class is approaching. I don't know, but it may lay me open to the charge of retailing gossip. But I feel impelled to mention an amusing thing that Dr. Olson tell me, told me yesterday. He said that Brother Cicely, hearing of this controversy and the position you have taken against Dr. Kellogg, thinks that your association with Brother Smith, whom he regards as uh, the master of the Bible, the master of Bible students, has had an influence on you to recover you from some of the error into which you had fallen. Of course, I know that this is nonsense and told the doctor that I was sure you had not been influenced in the least by Brother Smith. Neither do I think that you have in reality modified your ideas at all in view of the situation. For I believe, if I remember correctly, there was a little difference of opinion when you were here as to the sanctuary teaching. Interesting, we're gonna end by telling um, uh, Prescott that um, uh, Dr. S uh, that was uh, Dr. Sisley. Um, uh, Brother Sisley, actually, who was a doctor, had said that uh, the reason why Prescott was refusing the living temple is because Elder Smith had had an impact on him and uh, 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 uh fearing of his previous errors, um, uh, uh, he had uh 
he, he was taking a careful stand on the living temple. Uh, but uh, we're going to told uh, Dr. Cicely that that was nonsense and uh, Prescott was not doing that because Smith had influenced him. And so I, I'd like to leave the matter at that point, the response of uh, Wagona on the issue of the living temple. No difference from what Etijones believed and could have done because he said, I could have stood with Etijones if I were present. And he says, God is in everything, but everything is not God. Sister White on the other side says, God does not live in a sinner. Prescott says that God does not live in a sinner. It is the enemy that lives there. And so sometimes we enter into much debate on um, what Kellogg believed and the people surrounding him, what they believed. But now, as you go through these letters by Etijones, by Wagona, and uh, by Daniel, as we have seen, actually, the teachings of Kellogg influenced and affected many medical missionaries who are connected with him. And that is why uh, Sister White says that uh, it will seem strange for people to hear her say that, don't take your children to Battle Creek. She thought that she would never say such a thing, but when the living temple came there, she saw the danger and wanted no one to do anything with being uh, near the doctor because of the spiritualistic ideas and some atheistic ideas, some pantheistic ideas that was coming from Battle Creek. And so that is Wagona for you, responding to the charges of the living temple. I have read the letter the way it is. Maybe I have added some words there of my own mouth, which you can correct if they were wrong, but um, Sister White says that where were the watchmen? The people who had been so long in truth could not discern the errors that were in the living temple concerning God. He saw that the whole economy was swept away and the watchman was asleep and it was startling at him, uh, to, to her. These were the alpha of the omega of heresies. These were the alphas. We are living in a time where we are told that the track of errant truth lies so close that it will be hardly uh, able to distinguish them but by the Spirit of God. What we need at such a time as this is the Spirit of God. If there was uh, any other time that we need the Spirit is now, we can sit with our confidence, look at the words, get their root connections, but that will not help. The only thing is we need is the Spirit which authored the truth. When we have the spirit of truth, it can be able to detect error. But thinking that we can use any other tools to detect error, it is playing a game of life with the devil. And so may the Lord help us. And uh, in the next presentation, I'll be looking actually at, uh, I couldn't go and be able to go into the letter of uh, G.I. Butler his views on the living temple. But in the next presentation, presentation number 30, I'll be able to fully dwell in this because I don't want this to be so long. May God help us and may God bless us. Shall we close with uh, a word of uh, prayer? Shall we close with um, a word of prayer? Our Father in heaven, indeed, we are so thankful, Lord. We can point at the pioneers and uh, the people who are in their graves about these things that we are reading and say, how was it able that, uh, how was it possible that people could not detect these things? Yet there can be some things in our lives and uh, in the churches where we are saying amen and people will wonder why we are saying amen. It is because we have lost the spirit of discernment and insight. And we have come to lean on man more than we lean on thy spirit. And so help us today, Lord, that uh, we may not only point fingers at anyone, but point fingers at our own self, that we may examine ourselves more than we examine others. For subtle will be the devil in these last days. And we want to be sure we are on the right path. So help us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.